But I want to, I want to just take just a little bit. I want to recommend, uh, I don't know, five or six books here to you. Um, as I, I said just a little bit ago, what we are not, what we are not saying to you, is that you come in, you get one or two demons cast out, and you think that you're free. There, there may be a uh, hundred different spirits in in the sexual realm, or in the bitterness realm, or the fear realm. Okay, this book right here. I'm probably I ought to start with that. Let me start with something different here. Okay, this book right here. This is where we we recommend for people to begin. This book right here uh, called Picture in the Parlor by Frank Hammond, Frank and Adam A. Hammond. We recommend this as a, a basic handbook. It's just a how-to, and it gives you an overview of deliverance. Uh, one of the main reasons that we have this is more than set you free. We want to teach you deliverance. We want to see you get set free, but more importantly, we really want you to learn how to set other people's free. Okay, so right, you, this is basically like a college class. Uh, I would to God that I would have had something like this to go to when I first got saved. Because there, you will learn things in, in this class. You receive stuff in this class that not only will change your life, but every, every person that has problems that you come in contact with for the rest of your life that's willing to receive. Okay? This is a, is a basic how-to book. It's uh, called The Pigs in the Parlor by Frank and Ida May Hammond. And uh, I highly, highly recommend this book. We, we, uh, and we encourage people to go there. Uh, then when you start going into, uh, well, I'll, go, I'll do this another way. I'm going to stay in deliverance before I go into breaking curses. This is They Shall Expel Demons by Derek Prince. They shall expel demons by Derek Prince. Now, uh, on the back here, it says this is a $15 book, and we got it for 12 Okay, so we we we're, we're able to get them from discount houses and different things. And so we, ne- we never charge uh, extra for any books. Whatever we pay for the book, that's what we sell it for. Okay, this is very good. This go the how do you know that you may need deliverance? Can demons call sickness? This is very... The two fathers of deliverance uh, to the body of Christ during their generation was Frank Hammond and Derek Prince. What they teach is just, it's classical, which means to me, goes from generation to generation. This is an awesome book. Okay, so when you start off with deliverance, you pigs in the parlor, and then to get another perspective, what I tell people, read everything that you can, read every book that you can on deliverance, eat the meat, Spit out the fat, bone, and gristle. Not everything in these books, I don't agree with everything that you see in some of these books that you see that we have available. If, and some of them are very well, the authors are very well known. If they volunteered to come here and preach at convention for a week for free, I wouldn't let them speak here. But there's enough meat in the book that, uh, because I've, I've ordered DVDs of, of some different speakers and, and, uh, People, the things that are put in the book are edited, and when you when you watch videos or DVDs of certain people, there's some very whacked out stuff. There's one save, do one save unconditionally stuff. There's mocking prophets. There's mocking people that will come against sin. There's stuff that is absolutely abomination. I would I would not allow them ever to speak in this church, but I will allow some of the books in there. And there's some people I would not uh, allow the books to be in here for nothing. Because even though they got a large ministry, um, there's some very whacked out doctrines of demons. They've been seduced. Okay, now, in the same realm, I'm staying in the realm of deliverance. This is a book called Deliver the Captives by Alice Smith. We, and all these books we got back there, and I'll have uh, more. i always keep these on. This comes at it from a totally different angle. It tells you how to come against uh, the uh, things that if you were raised Catholic, Masonic Lodge. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, occultism, whatever you were into, this tells you how to break the thing. This is a comes from a different realm, and I highly recommend this book. All these three books, these are basically on deliverance. Then, when Pastor Jan and I, when, when I begin to learn about curses, this is a book by Frank Hammond, and it's called uh, The Breaking of Curses. Okay, so The Breaking of Curses, uh, This uh, he, he speaks in layman's term. And it's just very practical. 
when you begin to see stuff like when you start with the deliverance and then go into breaking curses, and this will help you so much to begin yeah. the way the way I put this with curses, you will begin to fully understand why things are the way that they are. You will begin to understand. You begin to comprehend. Uh, you you see um, you see that I have this up here on the board, and that I always say that. You know, everybody's on the on the journey, the road of life, and then they have to make a decision. And God said, I said, before your death and life, choose life that you and your seed may live and may multiply. I said, before you um, cursing and blessing, choose blessing. Okay, so when the, to say the same thing another way, when you when you begin to understand what God is saying in curses, it says in the book of Galatians, it says, he that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap. Okay, see, God's not out trying to hurt people. God's not trying to curse people. God's trying to save people from causing themselves a whole lot of trouble. But God is just and God is fair. So when someone says, I will to choose death, I'll choose cursing, I'll choose my flesh, you, no one will tell me what to do. I, for a man to know what to do, to do it or not, to him it is. Okay, so... People, we people, we cause ourselves a whole lot of trouble that God trying to save us from. And even when we make a mess, he'll help clean up the mess, but we may reap a few consequences. (laughs) So so here's the way the Bible puts it, see, that he that sow of the flesh shall, shall of the flesh reap. So you're going to, if... To, if you really dive in this stuff, if you just read these books that I recommend to you tonight, you will become a deliverance minister. Okay, you you will begin that. I never tried to be a deliverance minister. I knew there was something wrong with me. I got saved and I was on fire for God. And then after the first love wore off of me, then uh, uh, I entered in what I call my desert experience out of Egypt. Uh, going to the promised land, but in between is the desert. That's where the inward man gets dealt with. And when I came out of my new, uh, what were the, the season of generation, being regenerated, come out of the season of first love, then I came into, I had to deal with my stuff. My problem was, I didn't know how to deal with my stuff. And I didn't have a class like this to do. And I had, I knew nothing about these kind of books. And uh, uh, churches back in those days, they weren't, they were not doing deliverance. And so all I was trying to do was trying to figure out what is wrong with me, how come it seems to be working for other people, and how come I am so whacked out. I had problems. I still got problems, but I don't have near as many as I used to have. And that's when uh, the, the first thing somebody handed me, that book, Pigs in the Parlor. Someone just handed me that book, and I read that thing, and, that, and my life has been changed. Okay, so, but um, you go through, see, there were seasons and this may happen to you. There were seasons yes. that I would go through that I would, God would take me into seasons where I would just I would go like from the seventh grade to the eighth grade in deliverance, and then it would seem like it uh, just like you got a summer break from school. It seemed like there'd be a break, and then there'd be another season. That God would God would bring people to my life that needed massive deliverance. Their problem was they had such problems, I didn't know how to deal with it. God would bring new people to my life that had massive problems, I didn't know how to deal with it, so I had to research. I had to find answers for them. Yeah. The, the reason how this all happened was that because fear and rejection were, were just two great, big, powerful demons in my life. Fear and rejection. So when, when uh, fear and rejection were cast out of me, I remember I was sitting in the bed, and I, I was like a wet noodle, I just fell over. I couldn't even sit up. I did not have, this demon was so strong and so big in me, when it was cast out of me, I just fell over in the bed. I didn't have the strength to sit up. Uh, if a wet noodle, if a, a noodle's dry, you can stand it up, but when it's wet, it's just going to fall over. So then what happened was, I'd be around people with fear, and they'd be telling me what was going on, and I would say, I know what that is, because that's what I had, and I knew how it was dealt with. And so some people receive, and some people don't receive. And when God was raising me up, I began to realize I saw two groups of people in the church. Uh, we're talking about the topic of the earth. So I saw two groups of people. One had all the answers. They would they would go around telling everybody who can, who, who cannot have a demon. And I, I saw they're not casting any demons out. 
They're just telling who can have them, who doesn't have them. The other people, they're just casting them out. Amen. <laughs> yes. And I go, that the casting them out makes more sense to me because it's in the Bible. The people that were the theologians and they're trying to sword fight with you, who can have a demon, who can, who doesn't have a demon, uh, they're not casting any demons out because they had a bunch of head knowledge. Okay, when I when I saw with the Bible and I and I began to read these books, it just it just what well, here's in reality the reason I'm taking time with this tonight is that if you understand that if you're saved. You have already been enrolled in the school of ministry. And God has paid the tuition. And your tutor is the Holy Spirit that will teach you and guide you into. The question is not will he teach us. The question is do we want to learn. See, there are people that come in and out for years in the church and never learn anything out out of these great men and women of God who have been pioneers, who have been uh, the written books that have become classic to the body cry come in and out and never learn anything, not receive anything from them. And other people come in. Do you realize that there are people come in the church? They'll sit down there, they'll walk, and they'll sit down the person there immediately look at it. Is there any new shipments of book come in here? There are people that will walk in that door right there, like on work day. They'll walk in that door. They'll get one foot across the threshold, and they'll see a new book on this wall over here. There'll be people that will come in right there. Their first thing, their eyes are scanning. The shelves to see if we're standing new books in. By the way, there is another shipment on the way. <laughs> now, so what I'm telling you, and that's why I'm taking time with this, because God wants to put, just like this is kind of a prophetic picture, because there's kind of a flatness when we first came in. There was kind of a flat spirit, because we were so elevated and such a spirit of expectation that we had uh, a great minister, thank God for the great minister, we had a huge crowd, and we had expectation. But see, you can get alone with God with no crowd and have as much expectation, because it's not about a crowd, not about people, it's not about a special speaker, it's about you and God having church. And when you get to that place, there's freedom. That's when you, that's, that's the key to Christianity right there, is your, remember when Israel fell away, and God and uh, God said, "I'll bring you back after the seventy years captivity." This is what God said. This is a key because I really believe that's what God's saying to the church. He's saying, He said to to uh, the children of Israel that fell away, seventy years captivity. He said, "Then I will give you a heart to know me." So awesome. See, because before they didn't have a heart to know Him, no, they would tolerate a church service. Hurry up, get this thing over, so I can go do what I really want to do, so I can get back to the world. See, in, in dead, phony religion, there's no conviction, there's no power, there's no demons cast out there. There's a form of godliness that denied the power of God, but in real Christianity, here, here's basically what Jesus will do. He will interrupt everything. He'll change your whole life. Okay? Everything, the way you dress, the music you listen to, uh, the clothes you wear, where you go, where you don't go, the way you walk, the way you talk. <laughs> He will, your television, he will, he will deal with everything. The question is, how, how far do we want to go? Okay, that's the question. Okay, so then I want to talk about this. Oh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to do another book before I go there. While I was on the curses there uh, with Frank Heyman, this is, this is a book by Derek Prince, and I love the title. I said before, Blessing or Cursing, You Could Choose. And that's basically scripture. That, that's what, so people can choose. Uh, when you understand that, if you understand blessing your curses, it, it basically comes down to this. Will God do what he said he would do? And the, the answer is yes. Okay, so when people, when people make wrong choices, they begin to reap the consequences, and then they get angry at God, but God told them, thou shalt not, don't do that, flee fornication, and then go ahead and do it. Okay, so this is, uh, Derek Prince writes differently than Frank Hammond. I rec- I highly recommend both of them. And uh, Derek Prince goes into realms that other people, he, he's, uh, uh, he, some may call him like an intellectual, but he doesn't write as an intellectual. But he under he understands the Word of God. Yes. This is the key. Now, he understands Israel. 
And he understands deliverance. And he understands curses. And he understands the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He understands very much uh, realms that uh, not every minister go into. And it's a, it's a key to understanding Israel. Okay, now this is a this is about a fifty dollar book, and we got it for twenty five. It might it may be forty two or forty five dollars out and about, but we got it for twenty five dollars. This is this is called healing, healing through deliverance. And I highly recommend this book. Now, many people say that if they were going to be stranded on an island for ten years, they could only have one book of deliverance. They would choose this one. And the first half of this book now it may be. It may be a little bit of boring to you that, that have been in this church for a while. But the first half of this book is on the scriptural basis for deliverance. So if you want to be able to, you want to know for yourself in such a way that a Christian can have a demon and that uh, deliverance is scriptural and give biblical examples, this is the book that you want to buy because he goes into great detail so that you can explain it to other people in a way that will make sense. It will convince you. And it will convince other people if they're teachable. Some people, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're not going to change anything. They're, they're real. But then when he gets in, the, the key, and this is basically what we are saying and what we're teaching, that there is healing mentally, emotionally, yeah. spiritually, sexually. Every realm of, there's healing through deliverance. Yeah, and that's, that's basically what we're trying to say. And then this, uh, he goes into... Uh, Another realm, when he goes into practical ministry parts, he goes into stuff that no one else goes into. And so it's, it's different, kind of like Alice Smith's book is different. The two basic books, Frank Hammond, Pigs in the Parlor, and uh, by the way, one of the ways that you know that uh, the book Pigs in the Parlor is a very powerful book being used of God, it's one of the most mocked books ever in, the, in uh, yeah. Christianity. The people will mock at you. You will hear dead preachers preach against it because yep. they're not preaching the word of God. They, so they have to preach against. They have to preach against what God's using in someone else's life. But this is very, very important. That and uh, I think it's forty five, forty eight dollars in the bookstore, and we got it for twenty five dollars. Now I want to highly recommend this book if if there's been. Any kind of trauma, any kind of rejection, if you've been sexually abused, if you went through a, a hard divorce, if, if mommy or daddy passed away at the early age, or mommy and daddy divorced and, and one of your parents were gone, if you suffered any kind of rejection, this is one of the most powerful books. Uh, this, this is just amazing. You will read this over and over and over and over again. When I have books like this, I do not loan them out. Because most books that you loan out never come back. I'll I'll give people a book. I'll buy it for them if they if they can't afford it for themselves. But some of these books I, I will go over 25, 50, 75 times. Not maybe not read the whole book, but I'll read certain portions of it. And he goes into this up. This God can. Uh, here's what God said: My people perish for lack of knowledge. When you begin to realize that we are the way that we are because certain things have happened within our life. Certain circumstances and situations have happened in our life that shaped and molded our lives and damaged us and traumatized us. And uh, when, uh, when I went off to Bible college and they began to teach about rejection, I'd never heard the word, uh, to my knowledge, I'd never heard the word mentioned in church before I went to Bible college. And I was saved about five years before I went to Bible college. But so when they start teaching on rejection, I go like, "Oh my God!" I mean, not like this, this like uh, me being here uh, these years, and all of a sudden we open up a door, we go to another, like a mansion or something. And so it's like when it, when it opened up, when this began to open up to me, this will give you answers. Yeah. So these are nuggets that God had given us to dig out on our own. And so seek and you shall find, because so you really want uh, when. One of the things that we're trying to say, we're trying to get you that you don't come to me, you don't come to our convention speaker, you don't go to any man, you don't have to go to any woman, you go to God. That's where you, basically what we're trying to get you to go. We're trying to get you to have a relationship with God so that you have this daily walk, your daily bread, daily prayer time, daily relationship, daily fellowship, reading the Word of God uh, very powerfully, and, you, and that you come to the place that you can receive revelation and knowledge. 
Now, uh, recently, a couple in the church, I bought this book several years ago. And uh, I read, uh, that's the reason I've got this up here, because uh, a couple people uh, came to me recently in the church, and they were telling me how powerful that this is. And uh, I don't remember, I read this several years ago, it's in my library. Uh, This is only $8. This is uh, Destroying the Works of Witchcraft Through Fasting and Prayer by Ruth Brown. Destroying the Works of Witchcraft Through Fasting and Prayer by Ruth Brown. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, I'll tell you the truth, I don't, uh, it was been so long ago that I read that I don't remember uh, everything that was in there. Okay, but I wanted to, I wanted to take time for that. And, uh, okay, so let's go to, I got you First Thessalonians verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 23. And uh, you hear me say this over and over again, and uh, and one of the best ways to teach it is by repetition. Okay, so I want this this scripture to get so embedded within you that it really becomes a part of you, that you have a great understanding. Um, Chris, uh, you want to jump up, get, uh, get Watch Me up there, the release of his spirit, and uh, pull down one of the spiritual man just so I want uh, Chris to hold these two books up. I want to recommend this in the right hand there is what we, okay, Okay, in the right hand, it's called The Release of His Spirit. And at the beginning of that book, he gives a revelation of spirit, soul, and body. Okay, and on the on their left hand, is the spiritual man. He goes into great depth. Basically, in their left, uh, Chris, how much is that book in your left hand? Uh, it's uh, one and nine, and this one is eight. Eight dollars. The, the one in their left hand, eight dollars, is three books. It's three books in one. Okay, and it goes into such depth. And it goes into such thing of the passive mind. And once you get the revelation of that, it will really help you understand when, when you can begin to see Jesus in such a way you see yourself where you really are. Okay, thank you, Chris. You can put that up. But I wanted, I wanted her to share that because if, when, you get, uh, when you get the revelation of spirit, soul, and body, it, it makes a tremendous difference. And I, I want to say this to that. I want you. I want you to understand that I've been saved forty years, and I have not arrived. That I still am receiving much revelation, and and I think that that's the key to Christianity is that you're always taking new ground. You're always pursuing. You're always growing. You're praying, and you want more territory, and you want more of Him and less of you. When you stay in that position, okay. So um, let me read the scripture. Then I'll go over to this board, okay. May the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. I pray that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless into the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so we're talking about spirit. The scriptures say that there's spirit, there's soul, and there's body. They're, they're, we're, a, we're a threefold, okay? And uh, be, that you may be preserved blameless, which means that blameless means faultless and irreproachable. I use the King James Bible. Okay, so does God say that you can become blameless yes. and faultless yes. and irreproachable? Yes. Okay, now how? That I pray that you may be whole, that you may be restored. Okay, and look right here now. Okay, spirit, soul, and body. Now, just for my conscience sake, I put the heart in here, and I, uh, most deliverance ministers will not put the heart in there. They put it somewhere else. I don't know, you know, where they put it. So many, many don't include it in there. The reason I put a difference between it because the Bible said that your heart and your mind, that your the thoughts of your heart and of your mind. And there's about three hours of preaching. There's so many scriptures. In fact, we got a flyer around here on just scriptures on the heart. So the Bible says in Matthew, out of your heart proceeds evil thought. I differentiate between. Now, we're not talking about the natural heart. We're not talking about the physical heart. I differentiate between the... uh, I believe that there's a difference between the heart of man and the spirit of man. Now, I'm not saying you've got to believe like I believe. You believe like you believe, okay? Let the Holy Spirit teach you. But when it says out of the heart was evil thought, I don't believe that's a spirit. Okay, uh, so I believe when you're saved, the the Spirit of God... Here's what, what people will tell you. They'll say, I don't believe that Satan and God could dwell in the same place. The, the, the truth, to, they're right. But demons dwell in the mind, the will, the motion, the heart, and in the body. They, ne- they don't dwell in your spirit, man. 
So when you understand that you have a human spirit and the spirit of God dwells in your spirit man. Okay, so that's why I put the heart here because I see so many scriptures on the heart. Okay, so the mind, the will, the emotions, and the heart. If, and then uh, the body. If if the devil can can confuse you in your mind and make a strong will, self will, full of self idolatry, stubborn in the land of our will, all kind of fears and insecurities, great powerful feelings of inadequacy in our emotions. I've been there, and then all kind of whacked out things. When a hard hearted, calloused heart, cold hearted. Uh, a whole bunch of thing here, and then sickness in the body, a whole bunch of sex devils, and throwing a bunch of curses on uh, poverty. What I'm telling you, that hinders the river flowing out of you. Because you, you, God may be speaking to you, but there's so many thoughts going on inside of you. There's no, <clears throat> there's an inability to comprehend which thought is of God and which is not of God. Give me a call for a baby. A couple of them. Okay, so what Satan wants to do then jam us up in all these areas here to hinder your personality. Have you ever, see, here's what Satan wants for, that we'd be nothing but a taker. You ever been around someone and all they do is ever, all they do is what? <clears throat> They're not a giver. So the Bible said it's better to give than to receive. Okay, so Satan want, wants to, to bind up our personality. He wants us to have real bad behaviors, be, a, a, be abusive, as mean as a junkyard dog or as a hungry alligator. What he wants to do, he wants to hinder a relationship, even with God. Even with God. Even with the opposite sex. Even with the same sex. Especially hindering with authority. There are, there are people that will come to church, and uh, I, can, I can tell that they're strongholds because they have real trouble affecting, uh, relating to authority. There be there would be people. There are men that have been hurt by women that got a woman heading spirit, and that's why they become controlled, uh, je- uh, jealous, and real possessive, and they're totally insecure. And so, men like that, they learn two scriptures: the man is the head of the household, and wives submit. And they'll quote the they'll <laughs> they'll quote them a thousand times a day. And then there's women that'll they'll, they'll be very Jezebelic and and have like a witch spirit. Okay, so <clears throat> let me give a let me get into this um, outline here, and then maybe we'll give a few testimonies. Some people that have been uh, uh, some powerful deliverance, and then we'll go into question and answer period. Okay, I'm going to go. Uh, let's go to number eight: demon groupings. One of the most important things. That's why we got these slides. Look right here, just a minute. Uh, this is like demons that you'll find in the in the, what we call the realm. Pastor Jan and I use the word realms. Okay, so all these demons you'll find in the realm of, of fear. Okay, so uh, what I've seen before, and I'm, I'm not trying, I'm not, to, I'm not trying to put down other people to exalt myself, but I just want to bring the truth to you. When pa- when Pastor Jan and I learned about realms, there would be people. I would see other deliverance spirits. They would cast a demon. Someone would, would say, well, I'm having trouble with fear. And they cast out a demon of fear. And then they would, they would be told, you're, you're free. You'll never have another problem. And then I would come behind them and would cast out 20 or 30 demons out of the same person that someone else told them that you're free and you'll never have another problem. They didn't understand realms. Because where there's fear, there's normally there's fear of rejection. There's fear of failure. There's fear of being known. Fear of love. Fear, uh, all, fear of being abused. Uh, demons of afraid, terror, timidity, shyness, anxiety, stress, pressure, nervous, insomnia, phobias, nightmares, perfectionism, indecision, uh, fear of rejection, fear of confrontation, fear of hurting someone, fear of making a mistake, fear of not being perfect, fear of telling the truth, fear of, of not being in control, fear uh, of being controlled, fear of the opposite sex, fear of people, fear of accusation, fear of authority, Fear what people will think about us. Fear about what people will say. Okay, so there, uh, there's lying spirits, there's deception, deceit, strong delusion. So there's, there's a, a unbelief and mistrust. I had mistrust and suspicion real strong. So I, want, I just want you to understand the principle. Okay, that's why sometimes whenever we pray by the Spirit, if we get into a certain realm and I see someone come in 
and I see them really receiving, I discern then, I discern they don't just have fear, they got these groupies, what we call demon groupies in this realm. Get, uh, uh, Frank Hammond's book, Pigs in the Parlor, addresses that very, he's got one chapter called Demon Groupings, and he shows you how they're, they're being like in a group or they're being a family. Other people, other ministers might call it a stronghold, where all these demons in a certain area, uh, for instance, if someone's very sexual, they've been very immoral, uh, believe me, they're just not going to have one demon of lust. They're going to have lust, or the lust of the eyes, lust of the mind, lust of the flesh, yeah. a sensuality, uh, and a whole bunch of others. So uh, that's why we have these available for you over here, that you can, you can look at these and see these, these different demon groupings so that you understand, because this is the sexual realm right here. Okay, you can see how many are in the what we call the, the sexual realm. Okay, so when we take people through, when we take people through deliverance, um, I, I'm going I'm I'm to say this. It's, it's a compliment to you all. This is, this is a real compliment to you all. Um, our convention speaker, this is the first convention speaker that discern the difference between our Sunday morning people, our members, and then the many guests that came in on Sunday night, the freedom that was here Sunday morning. And here's what he discerned. Because you, will, you, will, you believe in deliverance. And you have allowed yourself to be delivered. You have allowed yourself to be cleansed and purged and sanctified and refined. We're not saying we're perfect. We're not saying that we've totally arrived. But what he discerned was there was a much freer spirit Sunday morning than Sunday night. Right. Sunday night, I was me night. I, I was me night where people glaring at me uh, because they're not used to passion. They, 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 they don't want Jesus to be the center. They come to hear a speaker. And they were irritated because they didn't want to praise Jesus. They didn't want to worship. They didn't want to meet with God. They were <coughs> they wanted to hear a speaker. And a convention speaker discerned it. There was a tremendous freedom here Sunday morning. And the reason was, see, when you allow yourself to be cleansed and purged, yeah. and that's why we got this, Real. that's why we got this up here, okay? When you allow yourself, up here, here a little that's why this takes time, okay? When you allow yourself to be cleansed and purged mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, sexually, emotionally, maritally, ministry, morally, socially, allow God to give you develop job skills, develop parenting skills, get an education, restore your family, restore broken relationships, restore your broken heart, and then deal with our stubborn self-will. Th that right there, uh, depending on someone, depending on someone's amount of bondage, could take from six months to three years. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that you can't be used in that time. I'm saying that the more you allow yourself to be cleansed and purged and sanctified, when 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 you get to the place of realizing, and I've had. Uh, People say that there's been things said uh, during deliverance that really, uh, for, for instance, this is a, a, a something I want to say. When, when I read in the Bible, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, bringing every thought into captivity, the first time I ever read that, really understood that, I slammed my Bible shut, I threw it down the table, I go, God, you are crazy, bringing every thought into captivity. Because at that time, I was a brand new Christian. I was very immature. I was having hundreds of uncontrolled thoughts every day. So I'm thinking, bring every thought into captivity. But that was unbelief. But you can. Now when a thought comes to me that's a negative or unbelieving, whatever, and I, when that thought comes to me and I resist that thought, many times that's why you see me, ugh, like that in the Spirit. It's a, the Holy Spirit is manifesting and the Holy Spirit in me is rejoicing because a thought of fear, a thought of anger, a thought of judgmentalism, a negative thought came to me and I resisted it. 
And that's why sometimes I manifest, because the Holy Spirit inside of me is rejoicing. Okay, so I learned you stop it at a thought. See, that's why your mind needs to be renewed. That's why I'm taking time tonight. If you understand all the spirits that's in in the mind, and uh, Tuesday workday people help me remember, we we need to make up a a whole bunch of new uh, flyers. I think we're out of the mind over here. But we've got a just like we got this group on, we got this uh, group on on the central realm. We've got it on the mind. So there's a whole bunch of demon spirits that we cast out of the mind. You got you got a new room? Thank you, Angel. Okay. Can you see how detailed that is? That's why these lists exist. And see, the more that you allow, that's why it takes time. And so that's what I what I what I told our convention speaker, and he just absolutely loved this. I said, our our Strategy, one of our strategies is we have early, as soon as we can, in spring have a convention, as soon as the weather breaks. Then we have a summer convention, then we have a late fall convention, as late as we can have it without getting into winter. Then the people that get saved and come out of a backslid condition or come in and join the church during that time, then the winter time we don't have conventions. We take them through deliverance, we break curses, we take them through the pro- we disciple them. We take them through cleansing and purging and sanctification, so that they are restored. So then, when spring breaks, then they could be used of God in evangelism. What we don't want is people just come in with their stuff and three years later have the same stuff, ten years later have the same stuff. Okay, so if you can see how detailed that is, see that's how your mind gets. When the Bible says in Ephesians 4.23, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. The word renewed means renovated. You understand the word renovated. John understands the word renovated. And if you're going to renovate a house, you take out all the old uh, wall board, all the, the bad wiring, the bad plumbing, the bad boards, and you take everything out that's that's not new, that's not in good condition, and you replace it. So the last, the last state of that, it, it's, it's like being new again. Okay, so to be renewed or renovated in the spirit of your mind. So what, what I'm telling you, and this is very powerful, is that just because a thought comes to you did not, does not mean it originated with you. There could be demons on the outside and demons on the inside of you giving thoughts. And what Satan wants us to do is begin to ponder on the thought so that the thought becomes a desire. So then you begin to crave it. You begin to ponder when we begin to contemplate what it would be like to do that. I'm waiting on you. Everybody's acting like I don't know. <laughs> what would it be like if I... And so Satan is trying to get... See, now here's, what, here's, why, here's why I separate the heart and the mind. Because the Bible says, if a man looks upon a woman with lust, he has committed what where? He has committed adultery where it in his. Now what I'm telling you, see, until until we get the kingdom of God in our hearts and in our mind, if we can't control our thoughts, if we can't control our will, and we're all kind of abuse and, and bad emotions in our emotional realm, and all the wrong behaviors, and, and what we were bound up in relationship. So here's what I did. You won't do this because you're being taught. But here's what I, I, I I'm going like I must change the whole world. Can't even control my thoughts. A stubborn self will, self idolatry, all kind of rejection, all kind of fear in the realm of my emotion. So the kingdom had to be established in me. I had to give God the inward ground before there could be outward ground taken. And that's why many people fail in ministry. They never give God the inward man. And it says in uh, Romans 2.28, uh, a believer is that one that is, is one inward. Circumcision is of the heart. And it's inward. If the kingdom of God is not in our heart and in our mind, people, all it will be is religious activity. And see, we're, if uh, and I've done this, okay, so that's why I can preach it that I got my identity in ministry 
and got away from a relationship. Look up. Going to change the whole world. But I was barren. And I was dead. And I was getting nowhere. I just wore myself out. And all it was was religious activity. Okay, so if you understand, that this is why we do it this way. And if, uh, you know, depending on, in the, in the beginning when we started this, we kind of did a kind of a shotgun spray. We just kind of spread out. We, we were just kind of, we weren't focusing too much many times. Uh, we didn't get in one area and just kind of stay in there. And we may, we may start doing that to, uh, to develop new areas. Well, I mean. Um, let's see which way the Lord had me go here. You know, I think I'm, I think I'm going to try to build some faith in some people. Just what happens when there's a, when there's a powerful deliverance? I I write it I write it down, and I've got these sheets of sheets of paper, and um, I, I just want to talk about some practical things. That there are people that will have um, allergies. I used to have some type of hay fever. It would be like at the end of May, the beginning of June. I couldn't breathe. My nose would get stopped up. My sinus would get stopped up. My eyes would itch. Um, I, it would drain down in my throat. My nose would get all stopped up. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't sleep. And, uh, and reading these books, and reading these books, I saw that it was, it, it, it was demonic. And so I came against it, cast a demon out, and I don't have allergies anymore. Come on, give God a praise. Now, you're going to come in contact with people with allergy. Okay, so that's why sometimes we do this, uh, we do this corporately because rather than one by one by one by one by one, that's why we pray corporately through the microphone. And then uh, Derek Prince in one of, one of the, I can't remember if it's the Red Book or the, the, blood, the book on curses. Derek Prince, I used to have every, every fall, I'd go into to, to a tremendous sinus infection. And I mean, I mean, big time sinus infection. Where I would go to the doctor, they give me ten days of antibiotics, and that wouldn't even touch it. I'd take another ten day, twenty days of antibiotics. This is years ago, and uh, nothing would affect it. And I read in the book that he said chronic sinusitis was a demon, and I laughed and I threw the book down and I, I, I laughed and said, "Then I'm, I'm just being real honest with you because this this has been a growth experience for me." And I laughed because I, I had this fear of getting off in left field, being made a fool of. So, you know, my thought, here was my thought. Demons calls it snot. That's crazy. Now, threw the book down. Demons calls it snot. <laughs> Nobody's going to make a fool out of me. But about two days later, after not being able to breathe or sleep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's awesome. You know, I go, well, Pastor Jan... Just in case, <laughs> just in case the man of God, Derry Prince, is right, <laughs> would you would you pray for me? And she began praying for me. <laughs> now, now what I'm telling you, God is so practical that when you start getting into this, you're going to begin to see. And um, there's a man by the name of C. Peter Wagner. And he fellowship with Cindy Jacobs and then what they call the Generals of Intercession. And he, he, he understands uh, quite a bit about warfare. And th- this is what he said. And, and understand, you know, there'll be a season that you're coming to this. And when your eyes begin to get open, you're gonna, he, here's what happened to me. I begin to realize, number one, how active God was in my life. Number two, how active the devil was against me. Yes. And how much it came down to my will. So see, Peter Wagner said that when you begin to come into the living, you begin to read this, and your eyes begin to get open, and you begin, so it's very important that you hang around people. If you want to learn how to pray, hang around praying people. If you want to learn deliverance, hang around people that are doing deliverance. You want to learn how to prophesy? Go where they're prophesying. See, Peter Wagner said this. People will tell him, oh, you see a demon behind every bush. And he answered them, this is what he said. He said, no, no, no. I don't see a demon behind every bush, but I see more demons behind more bushes than I ever imagined. And that's where you're going to come to. Because when, whenever I read that book, Demons yeah. Call Snot, I go, Demons so Snot. I, I threw the book down and I swelled up. And no, nobody's going to make a fool out of me. But see, it was. It was a generation. It was a curse. Okay, so, 
uh, yep. this 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 kind of. Thank you, Lord. I was teaching Pastor Jane the deliverance message, what I knew about it at that time. And she was praying for a lady that had, had an abortion. And right away, Pastor Dan, because I thought, she's real. Ne- <laughs> she's got the lady sitting there, and she's, and I, I'm watching you, I'm listening. I'm, I'm, <laughs> Pastor Dan says to the, you demon spirit of morbidity, come out. I go, oh my God, I was getting ready to jump up on morbidity. What a, oh my God, <laughs> morbidity. So I'm getting ready to jump up and come up. And all of a sudden the lady, ah, 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 ah. a morbid spirit. And God had given her a word of knowledge, a demon spirit of morbidity. Now see what I'm telling you. See, God will get right down in the trenches with you. He's going to get the real practical stuff that there are demon spirits called uh, hindering uh, spiritual hindrances that will hinder you from reading God's word and receiving a revelation of hearing preaching and not really hearing what the Spirit is saying of you being a song service but you won't feel the presence of God and it's called a spiritual hindrances okay it blocks you from feeling God it blocks you from receiving a revelation it will block you from operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Those are demonic spirits to block you and to hinder you of becoming full of God and being used of God and being alive in the spirit realm. Okay, these are things that you're going to learn in these books. And now I'm telling you, it's very, very powerful. So the point I want to, the point I really want to make to you is that people that have come into the church and have really grown are people that really studied for themselves. They studied to show themselves approved. Now, whether you, because we got different sections here. See, there's if you want to learn prayer, well, the the first two and a half rows over here are on prayer, and then we go to the whole. Then there's a couple rows on the Holy Spirit. Then there's about one and a half row over there on the Spirit of Revival, and then uh, almost that. There's three sections back there is on deliverance and breaking curses. Everything there is on deliverance and breaking curses other than the Strong's uh, Concordance and the, and the Naves top of the Bible. And then over there we got a section on hail. we got a section on praise and worship. we got a watch my knee uh, area. we got a section on uh, on heaven and hail, people that, that have seen heaven and have seen hail. And uh, so there's, there's basically what I'm saying then, that you begin this journey, and, and let me let me... Let me say this another way. Now, remember, we always talk about coming back out of Egypt, going to the promised land. And in between is the wilderness, right? And you're on this journey, this lifelong journey, and actually that will go through eternity. We will still be learning in heaven. But let me say the same thing another way. If you understand every church service is a journey. Yes. It's not how you come in that door. That's right. So you come in that door so tired, so oppressed, so beaten down, so hurt, so wounded, but that's not how you're going to leave. What's going to happen? You're going to meet with God yes. such a way. There, how many people have come to church, you were so tired, you were so worn out, you were demonically proud, it took all your strength just to focus to get to church, but well, you got such a strong touch of God that whenever you left, yes. you were so excited when you went home, you could go to sleep. Before you thought you were so tired, I can't come to church. But when you got such a strong touch of God, and you became alive of God, when you went home, all you could do is seek God. You either pray or read these, read these powerful books, or read your Bible, and you were so excited you couldn't. How many had that experience? It's powerful, isn't it? It's just so powerful. Okay, so what, what kind of where we're coming to a landing in on this right here is that we want you, we want you to seek God in these areas. That's why I selected these certain books. That this is a foundation right here. That you start with this foundation, and then this is, that will help you. That there's a, a a good six months assignment right there. That you just just get along with. Then uh, you come to one of us that on the on the staff, and we'll be able to uh, uh, recommend other books. So we're going to close right there. Let's shut down right there, and we're going to question and answer period. And then I want to have I want to make sure that you've got plenty of time. Uh, to be prayed uh, for deliverance. And uh, I want you to feel free to, to me there's no such thing as a stupid question. Any question, okay? Breath of butterfly wings.